what do you do with your emergency fund when you're out of debt, you have a six-figure net worth outside of your retirement accounts, you got $50,000 in your emergency fund, and you're able to save very consistently 20% of your income. And if you really, really wanted to, and if you really, and if you really wanted to, you could save 50%. What do you do with a $50,000 emergency fund at that point? I've been thinking about this question a lot lately. And especially because I retired for one year um, and I used my emergency fund in order to fund my retirement, it got me thinking, what really is the difference between an emergency fund and a retirement account? And I'm gonna explain, because that sounds crazy right now, but I'm gonna explain and go more into detail here in just a second. But I want to. I want you to think about that question. What do you do? Like, once you have all the bases covered, and you and you pretty much have no need for that fifty thousand dollar emergency fund, what do you do with it? Because the way that most people say to keep an emergency fund is to keep it in low risk assets. Basically, means that you put it in a savings account or a money market account, something that's not going to lose value. Because you want to have that money in case something goes wrong and you need it for an emergency. So the number one choice for emergency fund is gonna be the high yield savings account, which don't be an inflation. Now, since I retired, Since I retired using my emergency fund, and when people retire, the definition of a retirement fund is something to get you through the period between when you stop working and when you die. So what is the difference between that and an emergency fund? The emergency fund, like let's say you lose your job all of a sudden, three to six months of expenses, it's supposed to keep you, keep you afloat for three to six months until you find another source of income. But with a retirement fund, you're not finding another source of income. You're dying at the end of it. But what really is the difference there? So let's take two examples and just run through them real quick here. And this will add more clarity to the to, to what I'm talking about here. So let's say you're in that situation, right, as I described before. Basically, if all the basics of personal finance cover, you have a one-year emergency fund let's say that's $50,000 because you're spending $50,000 a year. You have that emergency fund and you, you got a six-figure investment portfolio outside of your retirement accounts. And the re retirement accounts are like also up there. You're saving a lot, of, a lot of your income, a big portion of your income. Why not take the emergency fund and invest it into the same funds that your retirement is invested into. And I, I don't mean put it into your retirement accounts. That'd be stupid because you can't access it without a bunch of penalties. What I'm saying is that you take an after-tax brokerage account, open up that kind of thing, and put that emergency fund in there. You just invest it in the same funds, like a target date fund or S&P 500 fund or whatever. Now, you probably got alarm bells going off in your head saying, no, don't do that. You're not supposed to put your emergency fund into risky assets. What if it goes down 50%? We're gonna talk about that later on in a second. But let's run through two scenarios here, okay? The first scenario is that you have $50,000 and you keep it in a savings account, basically. Don't touch it. That's your emergency fund. And you, know, you use it in case of an emergency. In the ideal situation, you're not going to have to use that money. You're never going to use that money because, well, either you don't have something that's like a big emergency or you have other sources of income or other assets that you can deploy in order to take care of that emergency. And for the five years that I've had an emergency fund, I've never pulled from it. I've never pulled from it because I've always been able to figure out another way to access the money from that, whether it's um, 
putting it on a credit card and just paying a larger balance from my next paycheck. Like instead of saving 20%, I would save 0% that month and make everything go to that credit card or something, right? Um, but let's say that I'm, so I'm 28 years old, right? And if I want to retire when I'm 80, I'm not retiring by the way, but let's just say hypothetically that I retire when I'm 80 years old. That gives me basically 50 years, 52 years to be exact, but we're going to say 50 years for simple math. 50 years of, um, you know, I don't know, life before I, before I go and retire. So in that first scenario, I take my $50,000 emergency fund and put it in a savings account, which doesn't mean inflation. Then when I'm 80 years old, I have $50,000. I don't have any more, I don't have any less. I probably do have less than $50,000, but because of inflation and stuff, but um, that's what I have. And that continues to be in my emergency fund. And then I start drawing from my retirement accounts because that's supposed to fund my retirement, right? Okay. That's scenario one. Scenario two is that I take the $50,000 and invest it into a market, I take the $50,000 and I invest it into the market, and let's say that I get, you know, a conservative 7% after inflation uh, return on my investments, okay? The past 100 or so years, the S&P 500 has returned 7% after inflation. So let's say that that's what happens with my money. In 50 years, what does the rule of 72 say is going to happen to my money, right? 72 divided by 7% means that my money is going to double roughly every 10.2 years. So 10 years, I get 50 years of growth, then that's five doubles. So five doubles. The first double, 50,000 becomes 100,000. The second double, 100,000 becomes 200,000. The third double, 200 becomes 400. The fourth double, 400 becomes 800, and the fifth double, 800 becomes 1.6 million. And let's just say that I don't really change anything in my life, and when I retire, I'm still going to be spending $50,000 a year. My emergency fund, like, take, and I have, and I suppose that I'm going to live another 20 years until I'm 100 years old. That's 20 years. What's 1.6 divided by 20? 1.6 million divided by 20. It's $80,000 a year. So my one-year emergency fund, letting it grow for 50 years, gives me... gives me, it's basically become my retirement account. I don't need all this other money that I've saved in my retirement accounts. Even after accounting for the capital gains taxes and stuff that I'm going to pay when I sell those assets, like, I'm, I'm set. That could be my retirement. That's it. And that was just for my one year's, one year emergency fund that I had when I was 28. Now, of course, you're going to say, like, yeah, well, you shouldn't invest that money because what if you invest it in the market tanks 50%, you lose your job, and now all of a sudden you need your emergency fund money, and there's only $25,000 in there. All right, well, if my emergency fund was a year to begin with, and if I have $25,000 now and I absolutely need to pull that money out of that thing, now I have six months. That's still a very acceptable amount for me. And if you feel comfortable, if you don't feel comfortable with six months, and you need a year's worth of emergency fund, here's what you do. Instead, before you go and implement the strategy, you make sure that your emergency fund is $100,000. All right? Now, all of a sudden, your potential retirement account is $3.2 billion, not $1.6, right? It's, it's double. But, and, and that's the absolute worst case scenario. Like the worst case scenario for, when you put money in an emergency fund, you're planning for the worst case scenario, which is the emergency happens the next day and your emergency fund 
uh, and the stock market crashes 50 percent that's the worst case scenario you can make it 70 percent or 80 percent or whatever you want right the numbers are just going to be a little bit different but that's basically what you're planning for that's very 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 unlikely to happen even this whole thing when the entire country shut down for coronavirus the market didn't crash more than 40 percent i think it went down like 35 percent at most so even shutting the entire country down didn't didn't make it drop 50 percent it didn't even match 2008 and 2008 was very different than this 2008 was like people realizing like oh i'm not going to get my money back oh shoot right that's not what happened here this was a this was an economy shutdown 2008 was not an economy shutdown but anyway that's beside the point what i'm saying is that you plan for the worst case scenario with this thing and at the end of the day you end up with the a scenario that's better than you ever thought possible Right? And when you retire, would you rather have $50,000 in your emergency fund or would you rather have $1.6 million in your emergency fund? And at that point, your emergency fund is still the same thing. You're just using it to fund, fund your lifestyle without having a source of income. So what is really the difference then between an emergency fund and a retirement account? That's, why, that's what I mean by they're not, they're not really different. It's just that when we, we've defined the emergency fund to be a different definition than the retirement fund. And the reason that I started thinking about this was um, when I retired, I, I retired when I was 26, but my time limit for retirement was one year. And the reason I said it at, at one year was because I had one year's worth of money in my emergency fund. So when I retire, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to retire, but let's say that I do, right? When I reach retirement age, and let's say it's 20 years old, or not 20, but 100 minus 20, 80 years old, then my basically what I want is an emergency fund that lasts me 20 years, which is what we call retirement accounts. And you know funny thing about retirement this is kind of like a side story but I didn't like I was not comfortable telling people that I retired because I didn't think that I had actually retired because in my mind like I thought I was telling people a lie that I was retired because in my mind retirement meant that I have left the workplace for good and I'm never going back and I have enough money in my portfolio to fund my lifestyle for the rest of my life. But that's not what retirement is. That's what I thought it is, but that's not what it is. And I had never looked up the definition of retirement until after I had already retired. And if you look it up right now, go look it up. The definition that you're gonna get for retirement is uh, provided by Oxford English Dictionary. Uh, on behalf of Google, right? Brought to you by Google. The definition for retirement is leaving one's work um, and I can't remember exactly what it is right now, obviously, because I'm driving, but it's retiring from the workplace is, is like leaving your job, basically. Ceasing to work, leaving the workforce and ceasing to work. That's what retirement is. I did that. That... I retired. <laughs> I did it for a year, but you know, people retire once and then they go back. And it, retiring doesn't mean that you can't go back to work. You can't re-enter the workforce. You can't re-retire. You can't retire a second time. No, you can. And I had somebody on my show who retired many times in his life, and you know, he's working now and he has another retirement coming up. But he's he says he's not gonna like retire the way that everybody thinks about retirement, which is either the beach or the rocking chair on the porch, he's not doing that. He's going to start another business up. So, 
so he's retiring from he's ceasing to work for a short period of time before going and doing something else. Right? So the other thing is that you know people talk about they want to retire early. That's the dumbest that's the dumbest like saying early retirement is like the dumbest thing that you can do with the word retirement. Like early doesn't doesn't mean doesn't add anything to the as an adverb to that word retirement. It just doesn't. Because you can retire at any point. Like you can be in high school and retire. You can retire from the summer job that you had. That's retirement. You're ceasing to work to go to school. But we don't call that retirement. We only have defined retirement in this very narrow context, which basically the media has gotten gotten us to think that oh this is what retirement is and I'm not, you know, not the media but the entire industry and all these people and everything has gone to this point where it's like this is what retirement is and it means nothing else but even when you look up the definition of retirement it's going to blow your mind because you realize that it applies to a lot more things than than what we've constructed it to mean in our mind And the same thing has happened with the emergency fund. It's like, this is what the emergency fund... Some guy said, this is what the emergency fund is, and if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. And basically, everybody joined a cult, and the emergency fund cult is, is, is it's in a savings account, and that's all that it is, and that's what it is. It can't be anything else. It's just not possible. Oh, you're breaking the rules of personal finance. You don't have your... You can't have your emergency fund in the stock market. That's not a real... That's an investment at that point. But if you think about it, an emergency fund is kind of like an investment. I'm not going to go down this route in this video, but okay, you can also define it as an investment if you want. All right? Like... An investment is something that you put money into to get a return. And, like, you, you can invest in your credit card debt. Because every dollar that you pay off on your credit card, right, you're not paying that APR anymore on that dollar. You're done with that. So that's an investment that nets you a pretty good-ass return. Same thing with the emergency fund, right? When you're in that process of getting out of debt, the emergency fund is there so that you don't go more into debt. So you're basically, it's an investment of avoidance. It's kind of like insurance, I guess. But anyway, yeah, that's not what an emergency, like when people say, oh, an emergency fund is a savings account with cash in it, that's not what an emergency fund is. It's one way to set up an emergency fund, but it's not what the emergency fund is. The emergency fund is defined by its purpose. And when people say that a retirement account is a 401k or an IRA or some kind of IRS account, that's not what a requirement retirement account is. That's one way of setting up a retirement account. The retirement account is defined by the purpose that it provides, like the reason for it. And if you look at the reason for an emergency fund and the reason for a retirement account, they're really the same thing. We just use different words to describe it. Now, I'm going to add on this last note here that the, the method that I've described, this is something that I'm really thinking about doing, and I'm, pr I'm probably going to do this going forward. But the method that I, that I described here is not for somebody who's just starting out. Like, if you're starting out with a $1,000 emergency fund and you still have a bunch of debts to pay off, don't do this. Don't put your $1,000 into the stock market and think, hey, I'm being really smart here, because you're not. Because plan for the worst case scenario. You put $1,000 in there, the market crashes tomorrow, and you lose your job, now you only have 5000 no, not, not 5000 Now you have $500 in there and, you're, and it's done. What if you have an $800 car expense? Now you're you're back and you're back to digging a deeper hole for yourself. So this is not a beginner strategy. This is not something that you do at the beginning of your personal finance journey. This is something that you do way down the line. Once you've covered all the basics and everything else is sorted out, 
this is something that you do at that point, right? Oh, there's one other thing that I wanted to cover, right? Remember, go back to those two scenarios. The first scenario is where we just keep $50,000 and keep that to retirement and have $50,000 at retirement. The second scenario was I put $50,000 into a stock market fund and I get a return on it and I have $1.6 million when I retire, right? Um, let's say that we have to use our retirement fund for something. And let's say it's a pretty sizable amount, like $20,000, all at once I have to take it out. Okay? In scenario one, you take out the $20,000 and use it for whatever. The, the, like the way that people say that, you know, you should maintain your emergency fund is that if you take out from it, you should put the money back in. So you take out 20000 and then over time, you re-save that money back into the uh, emergency fund, right? So it, it drops down, it's 50 and then it becomes 30 and then over time it goes back up to being 50 again. So you, you pay it back. At the end of the day though, when you retire at 80 years old, you still have, you still have $50,000. And in a way, because you have to keep adding to it because of inflation, it sort of becomes a liability to you. It sort of becomes a liability because you have to put money into it to maintain the thing. Scenario two, right? Let's say that I need $20,000 right away. And, and you know, let's say that the money has maybe grown. Instead of $50,000, it's um, $70,000. It's after a couple years, you know, It's not even one double at that point. Maybe it's like two or three years down the line. I withdraw $20,000 from it. So over time, while I'm waiting for the emergency, the money has grown. I have $70,000. I take it out. Now I have $50,000 in there. Um, if I follow the same conventional wisdom that, hey, you got to put that money back into the emergency fund, then I'm going to basically just be... You know, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be rebuying the assets in that investment account, and it's going to be back, like that $20,000 is going to be back in there. <coughs> and actually, that gives you more of an opportunity to do dollar cost averaging. It usually doesn't work out in your, in your favor when you do that, but hey, given the opportunity, why not try it? Or you could try like time diversification or something like that, right? You have more options of what to do. But the other thing that you can do is reevaluate, you know, after you take out that twenty thousand dollars, you've lost that five years of growth or whatever, but then you can reevaluate and say, hey, if I don't put this money back into the emergency fund, what's it gonna look like when I'm eighty years old? Instead of one point six million, it might be one point two million or something. And you can say, oh, I'm okay with that. Right? then you don't have to put that money back. You don't have to put it back. And you say, well, you're just breaking the rules, man. You're Eventually, if you keep doing that, you're not gonna have any money when you retire. And to that question, or to that objection, I just laugh, because in scenario one, you have $50,000. And scenario two, if I end up with $50,000 at the end of the day, that means I spent a lot more than $50,000. I've had all these emergencies and I've been able to use that. I have gotten so much use out of that emergency fund that I don't even care that I have, don't have that emergency fund. It's like it's served its purpose far out and far beyond. It's, it's done so well, right? So anyway, that's the... Uh, that's the video for today. I know this is not my finance channel here, but um, I just, this is the format that is coming in, right? Um, so I do have another channel. It's called Righteous Finance. Um, so if you want like more financial stuff like this, tips, tricks, um, 
why it's stupid to define retirement funds and that kind of, like insightful stuff. Like I feel like it's insightful. I've never heard anybody talk about this ever. And whenever I started asking this question to people and people have this notion that an emergency fund is this thing. It's like a savings account with cash in it, nothing else. That's it. It can't be anything else. So, I don't know. This is insightful, right? I guess. Maybe you learned something new here. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you think this is dumb. You know? If you think it's dumb, explain why. I'd like to hear, hear your reasoning. I might be missing something. I might very well be missing something. But, yeah. That's it, guys. Bye-bye.